So um, we talked about uh, who should talk first. And I said, well, it's my conference. Let me talk first. And they said, OK, you talk first. And then we said, Mike really uh, focuses on outbound selling. And Tim is the smart guy in the room who has all of the data. And um, I talk strategy. And I'd argue that strategy comes first. And since it's my conference, I'm going to talk first. Um, in the homework that nobody did, and everyone gets an F. And actually, you know, I find it interesting. I bring that up not to scold you in class, but rather I found it interesting that one of the questions that I asked is, if we didn't have this session, if it was three hours, one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, with Tim, and with Mike, free time, three hours, three consultants, hundreds of dollars an hour, what do you want to talk about? Nobody answered that question, which I found interesting. And I find it interesting because I wonder if it's because we know we should be doing more marketing, but we really don't have time for it. It's like we all know that we need to do a better job of prospecting and curating and nurturing and all those marketing terms. But seriously, that's not as important as getting the FDA submission done or I have a quality audit coming up or all these other functional things that happen in a medical device company. Marketing's kind of last. I'm not offended. I'm doing fine. But if you need more prospects and more customers and a comfortable funnel where people are coming in all the time, it can't be ignored. Now, I know some of you personally, in fact, at least half of you personally in the room, and I know that, well, I'm a just a one-person shop, and Rick play, I've become very friendly with Rick over the years, and he says, if I were, uh, you know, he's his marketing person, he said, I, I would unequivocally fire my marketing team if I were me. But it's, he can't afford a marketing team. And so given everything that he has to do, something suffers. So I hope at least for these three hours we can just block out, you know, if you need to check your email, that's not offensive, just do what you have to do. But let's focus on those things that can help generate more uh, leads for your business. So if I were to put on my slides, the first thing would be, um, what is your positioning statement? And uh, there are a few fields to fill in, so I actually will go through that. Now, I'm sure most of you could probably answer these, but it's not so intuitive that you can immediately just fill it in. In fact, if you do it really well, it's hard. It's intimidating, actually. There's just five little spaces there. How hard can it be? But I'll take you through an example. So to whom? Blessed with the group the size that it is, I get questions from folks all the time about, I need more customers. And if I probe just a little bit, they say, anyone who will distribute my product, not great targeting. Um, so the more you specifically know about the wants and the needs of a specific customer, that's good. And, and this value proposition isn't about um, isn't about romance copy. This is something that I put in a pretty brochure. This is for you to know, for your um, compass, what time is well spent. If I'm focusing on the person that I said I was going to focus on. Name. Now, that should be easy. But even I have a choice here. When I talk about my brand, at the moment, I have my medical Marcom logo up. It just so happens before the medical devices group happened, I had my own little business, which I still do. It's kind of what I do for a living. And I run the group on the side. And it's fun. And I get to meet people from all over the world. But what I do for a living, I could say Medical Marcom is my business. Or I could say Joe Hage is my business. Because, and I personally make this choice, I talk about Joe Hage. Because when people interact with Medical Marcom, they really want to talk to me. If I said, I'm going to have my Vice President Lucas work on it, you might think that's cute, but perhaps not as effective as me working on your business. So I choose to say Joe instead of Medical Marcom. 
frame of reference. Now this is a, an interesting one. Um, way back, um, one of my early postgraduate jobs was I worked at Kraft Foods and I worked on post cereal. So what's the frame of reference? Is it a breakfast food? Is it all breakfast food that I was competing against? Was it all cereal? Was it only ready to eat cereal? How you define the category is again, in the spirit of to whom, how specific you are. Uh, provides what benefit, that's really all your customer cares about, what's in it for me. So speak of it in that way. And supporting claims is why should I believe anything you say? So, just for the sake of showing you one example, here's mine. And it took a while for me to figure this out. To mid-sized medical device manufacturers, I'm a marketer that will help you improve the quality and quantity of your leads. I typically leave it there, and I leave plenty of breadcrumbs all over the web for you to discover for yourself. I've done it before. I lead a great big group. I know smart people that I can refer to. For some, for my target, that's all they need. For others that are like, I need more, where's the big agency? That's not me. Now if a huge Medtronic calls me and says, I need you, I'm not gonna hang up, but I'm also not gonna spend any of my time trying to pursue them. I'd much rather work with Sanjeev, who's relatively start up and he's got a great new innovation and he's my friend. I have the luxury of working with my, this is my value proposition. And he, while we don't do business and I'm not actually pitching you right now, know that if you needed my help, I wanna help. I think you know me well enough to know that's true. It's not me pitching. Um, that's my value prop. So what's yours? We don't have time to go through them all, but I start here before anything that these very smart guys have to say because if you don't know the answer to this, what's the point of him getting someone on the phone for you? What would you say? And Tim will help you figure out who you should get on the phone. But until you do that, what's the point? So I'm, I'm not gonna go through all of these and, and if you've seen any of my workshops or anything that I've done before, this is my very simple formula. This is all you need to know about marketing these days. It's interesting, when people come to me, they typically want me to help them with their website, which I do. But back at Kraft, before there was websites, in fact, here's a quick anecdote if you'll indulge me. Back in 1995, I got assigned to the internet project, which I thought was complete bullshit, and we did nothing. And I was like, the internet project. We're selling breakfast cereal, what? And I got out of that rotation and I was on selling bagels, which was a terrible thing. But anyhow, um, now it's all about getting found. And where do people look? They, if you can't get found, there's a problem. Now I have an asterisk there, I'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> Second is be engaging. Once they find you, do you know what a bounce rate means? A bounce rate is when somebody shows up on your site and within 10 seconds is out of there. They look, they say, this isn't what I was looking for and they go to the next thing in the queue. So when somebody does stumble upon you, are you, set up in an inviting way that they're like, oh, this is logical, I can see where I would go to find out this information. And if it's someone that you weren't targeting and you're for whom in the first place, and they leave, that's okay. You didn't really want them in the first place. And then the third is to collect their information. So how many of you went to the 10X site and uh, you know, in registering, at some point you tried to leave the site and a pop-up came up and it said, uh, how would you like me to right now send you a discount code, the full guest list, and the brochure? How many of you saw that pop up? More than half the room. Now, pop ups are polarizing. People say, I hate pop ups. That's not a good experience. When I see that kind of shit, I shut down the site. Fine. I can tell you as of now, 340 people filled in that form. A small fraction of them actually came, that's okay. But now 340 people are aware of the caliber of the people that are sitting in this room. And I had a number of people that I would follow up, just kind of, hey, I saw you did this, are you coming? I'm finalizing numbers of food and help me out here. 
Joe, really sorry, wish I knew about this earlier. Putting in budget for next year, I said that's great. I'm also doing something that specializes in marketing, sales, and business development in November. It's a first time ever project. Would you like information about that when it's available? 120 of them said yes. So there's another conference that I've not even begun to work on that I have 120 people queued up for because I put a pop-up up, which everyone hates, right? The fact is, if you hate pop-ups in general, but it's a pop-up of information that's relevant to you, you know, if, you were, if you're trading in a stock and, and uh, you get, you know, before you push the actual order button, you see a pop-up that says, earnings coming out tomorrow, do you want to wait on this trade? I'm giving a silly example I just made up. You might think, maybe I should hold off and see how earnings are. That wouldn't be irrelevant. That would be very relevant. That would be very welcome. So you're thinking about a conference. I say, how would you like if I gave you a discount? The re Did anyone come here? Actually, I know the answer is yes, but how many of you came here primarily because of the people that you would meet? More than half the room. And to me, honestly, that's the only reason to come to a conference. Because while I'm very happy, um, there's nothing I'm going to tell you today that I haven't written about before. You could have read all of this for free. Can you believe it? You paid and you're sitting in this room. You could have done it for free. Why? Because you want to engage. You want to meet them. You want to ask specific questions. That's the only reason to do it in person. Everything else can be virtual. That's my value proposition, and that's why it works for me. So um, I'll talk a little bit about Get Found, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about Tim Kringle, who will, he didn't know it. If you want to use the podium, if you want to set up, I don't need my slide if you want to set something up. Um, I put an asterisk next to Get Found because um, getting found boils down to are you on page one of Google or Bing or your preferred uh, search engine. Um, a slide I won't show you, it just says that 91.4% um, of all internet searches stop on page one. So only 10% bother to go to page two, and I think only 4% go to page three, and then it's like, <laughs> so unless you're gonna be in the top 10 spaces, now what does it take to get into the top 10 spaces? It takes a lot of work and money, maybe. It depends. Um, there are two main levers that get you on page one. Number one is, I typed in the words Chuck Vivian. If the words Chuck Vivian aren't anywhere on my site, Google would be foolish to send them to me. They should go to the Cogency group where they will find all about Chuck. So. Google's job is to serve the most relevant Chuck Vivian answer there is. If we find out that Chuck went to a reunion in 2005 and that's the number one result, I say, who cares? I want to know what he's going to do for me. I would hope that either your LinkedIn profile or Cogency Group is the number one result. I didn't try it. Now, what happens if there are lots of Chuck Vivians? I don't know. So here's a funny story time. It turns out, I didn't know this back in the 70s, I thought that my father, Joe, and I were the only two Joe Hages that existed. I had never met another Hage. And then this internet thing happened, and I Googled Joe Hage, and wouldn't you know it, this bastard, <laughs> who's the CEO of blah, blah, bullshit, I don't care, and he's like on this board, and. He has the audacity to go by Joe Hage, and I'm like, I'm taking him down. I made it a personal mission that I'm going to obliterate this Joe Hage from the universe. There's, there's a thief that's a Joe Hage. There's a lawyer Joe Hage. There's a baseball playing Joe Hage. There's a guy who mows the lawn somewhere in New York. He's groundskeeper. And then this Joe Hage. So, um, this trick probably won't work anymore, but it worked back then, and I love this story. Thank you for letting me tell it.
I wrote an article called um, Those Other Joe Hages. And I told a story how back when I was little, it was just me and my dad. We were the only Joe Hages that mattered until now where this other person who shall not be named uh, is beating me in Google. <laughs> and uh, I said, I just want to say here and now that I am the best Joe Hage, the most professional Joe Hage, the excellent Joe Hage, the optimal Joe Hage, and all sorts of other keyword stuffing tactics that I could think of. <laughs> and with three, within three days, that guy was nowhere to be found in slot number one. So, can we win the Chuck Vivian game? You're damn right we can. Now, if your name is Jennifer Lopez, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Uh, but uh, Shirley said, uh, Sanjeev, you can, you can do this. And Jay Kamath, I'm feeling pretty good about our chances. Um, again, that's, that's your name, which is important. If you, if you don't have the budget to win uh, MRI equipment, and that'll be tough, or, you know, hip replacement. I want everyone who's shopping for equipment for hip replacement. Sorry, man, that's going to be tough. It can be done, but it's going to be really tough because you're going to have to talk about hip replacement a lot, so much so that Google, who lives or dies by giving you the best possible result, <laughs> says when you tip hip, type in hip replacement, this is probably what you're looking for. And I'm going to guess hip replacement, that answer probably is from a patient point of view about, I'm thinking of getting a hip replacement, what's involved, what should I know? That's probably the answer. So it's probably not a great place to say, hi, my name is Zimmer, and please buy this device. Zimmer might want to win the term hip replacement, but the fact is, it's not probably going to, I don't know, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Um, same thing when I worked at Cardiac Science as their director of marketing communication, we sold ECGs electrocardiogram uh, boxes. Well, winning ECG was pointless because people were told that they had to take an ECG. They weren't about to buy a new Burdick machine. That was not a relevant search, but buy ECG equipment, that is a relevant search. They call that a longer tail search. So think of what is the string of words that really want what Craig Peterson does? What is that string? I mean, surely we want to win Craig Peterson, but marketing consulting is, sorry, man, you're not. And besides, that result is probably terrible. When I first, first started Medical Marcom, I was deciding which term should I target. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if everyone who needed help with medical marketing came to me? And I had a chat box, we'll talk about that at some point. And I started interacting with someone, and I said, how did you find me? He said, he told me the whole story, which was a real blessing. He said, well, first I typed in medical marketing and it was crap. It was like how to get more patients into your office or all sorts of things. And he, recognizing that his search wasn't specific enough, got more specific. He typed in medical device marketing. And I was on page one. I wasn't number one at the time. I was number eight. So I said, I'm number eight. Why are we talking? And he said, this comes to number two, because I went to all of the seven before you and they weren't what I was looking for. But I saw the way that you talked. Again, I have two bosses, God and Beth, his mother. That's it. I don't have to answer to anybody. So I decided what, what my filter is. I don't have to report to someone about, no, why don't you make it bigger? No, my brand, if I only worked with you people for my marketing business, I would have a very full and happy life because I'd be helping people I care about. Not to say that if some random person shows up, I'm not going to talk with them, but Ed, we've talked about Hilo. I'm excited about your technology. I want to see it win. So when you're ready, I'm here to help. I'd rather do that than cast this huge net. You know, we, we talk a lot too about, I need prospects, I need prospects. How long have we known one another? More than two years. Besides having paid to come to this conference, I have never asked nor received a penny from him. And it was never about, I ne remember when I interviewed you back in, when I had the chat that I was doing? It wasn't for money. 
I genuinely wanted to know him. He has a fascinating story. So there are breakfasts and lunches and ice cream breaks and drinks. Saddle up to Ed, because he has a fascinating story. Honestly, I could spend the rest of the time on it. Um, it was interesting for me. So it's, it's natural that when he actually needs someone who does what I do, I would be in his consideration set at least. There's no shortcut to what we've built. There's no amount of targeting or spamming or letters or, hi, Mr. Lin, I see you have a device, can I help you, that will break what we've built. There's no shortcut to it. I'm sorry, there isn't. End of marketing lesson. I'm sorry, that, that's all there is to it. So, you know, part of that is, I'm not sure how we found one another even. I don't remember. Do you remember? Maybe the group, maybe not. Maybe, maybe through the group. Um, I don't know. You guys let me get off on a tangent. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm watching you, Jose. Um, okay, so it was keywords, so it's, it, Chuck Vivian's in the actual string. The other thing is, how many inbound links are coming to the site that you want? So, for example, if everyone um, who watches Mad Men, nobody in the room watches Mad Men? <laughs> I love it. It's the best. I know, but I missed it last night. And like all over Yahoo is like, what happened? And I can't read any of it. Um, if you type in Mad Men, the number one result is going to be amc.com slash Mad Men. Not only because it's their show, but because people are linking to that. It's telling Google through bits and bytes, if you want to learn about Mad Men, you probably want to go to the place that all other nodes in the website are saying is the place to get that information. That's it. I've told you the magic formula. The words mad men are used, and people linked to that site. Go now and do the same. It's not so easy for hip replacement. It can be done. So I say get found asterisk. Rick's budget, I have a general idea what it is. He's not gonna win those search terms, but he can write prolifically. And if he can't because he just doesn't have the time, he might need to bring someone on to do that, which unfortunately costs money, and there is the paradox. I'm sorry, it's not easier than that. 